Hello everyone. For this video, I and several other artists were invited by Taran from Conjured Craft to join in a holiday-themed monster-making project called You Ghouls. The basic idea is to create whatever cryptid you want that has their origin in a holiday tradition. I am Dutch and one of the main holiday traditions that we celebrate is uh, Sinterklaas. The tradition of Sinterklaas has been quite controversial not because of Sinterklaas himself, but because of uh, Sinterklaas's helper, uh, Zwarte Piet, or in English, Black Piet. In this video, you will see me making a bust of Krampus, for reasons that will become clear later on. Um, but I will be talking about my personal experiences with this controversy. Because of this, this video will be different to my other videos, uh, but I felt like this is something that I had to talk about. If by the end of the video you have some questions about the sculpting process, uh, feel free to ask them in the comments. So, first I will give you some background for the character that is Swarte Piet. He is a helper for Sinterklaas and together they bring gifts to children that behaved well during the year. Bad behaving children are told that they might receive lumps of coal, be beaten with a bundle of twigs or be put in a burlap bag and taken with Sinterklaas and Swarte Piet. The controversy around Swarte Piet has to do with the way that he is depicted. The character has black face makeup, curly black hair, bright red lips, sometimes he has golden earrings and is dressed in a style reminiscent of 16th century pages. Before the second half of the 20th century, he sometimes carried chains as well. In 2013, I and probably a lot of others in the Netherlands were confronted with the fact that this depiction is viewed as racist when a United Nations consultant wrote a letter to the Dutch government. To be honest, my first reaction to this was indifference. I grew up with Zwarte Piet and I did not see it was racist. I mostly kept myself out of the debate and didn't really form an opinion on the matter. In the following years, the debate intensified when December came nearer and each year seemed to be more intense, more polarized than the year before. There were protests, court cases and incredibly toxic internet discussions. Still, I kept myself on the sideline, not really choosing a side. This all changed for me when the world was shocked with the murder of George Floyd. Of course I knew that racism existed, but the murder of George Floyd was the first time I saw it happening so clearly. I don't think I'm very original in this take because Black Lives Matter protests quickly spread all over the world. I'm just saying that this was the first time that I realized that I didn't know anything about racism and that I didn't even know why people said Swarte Piet is a racist depiction. The following years I slowly learned more and more through books, documentaries and news articles. I learned that I had so many blind spots when it came to racism, the history of racism and its relation to colonialism. I certainly don't want to come across as if I no longer have these blind spots and that I'm done learning about these things. I'm still learning, reading and listening to confront these blind spots. Anyway, when I was invited to this creative collaboration last September, the yearly discussion around Swarte Piet was in full swing. I also vaguely remember seeing a picture of Sinterklaas from Austria, where he isn't accompanied by Swarte Piet, but with the demonic figure called Krampus. I decided that this year I would finally dive into this controversy. Krampus is a figure that is believed to have pre-Christian origins. It is mostly depicted as a black figure with goat horns, goat legs and a bright red tongue. Just like a lot of other pagan traditions, Krampus was used as a way to scare children into behaving well. With Christianity growing rapidly, these pagan traditions were being overtaken. This is how Krampus became linked to Sinterklaas, where the saint would give presents to well-behaving children and Krampus would punish bad-behaving children. Krampus also carries chains that are believed to stand for the binding of the devil by the Christian church, a bundle of twigs to punish children and a burlap sack or basket on its back to take bad children away. It's very clear that Sinterklaas was depicted as the good guy and Krampus his evil counterpart. While this Krampus tradition was more or less continued in Central and Eastern Europe, it was forbidden in the Netherlands when it reformed into a mostly Protestant nation that was opposed to the honoring of saints. However, the Feast of Sinterklaas remained very popular with the people. 
During this time, Sinterklaas took over the role of Krampus, where the saint would be depicted as a strict and scary man. In the 19th century, the feast of Sinterklaas slowly came back into the public. Many people point to a children's book from 1850 by Jan Schenkman as the origin of Zwarte Piet. It is the first time that Sinterklaas is accompanied by a black person. In the following decades, Zwarte Piet's outfit and appearance slowly transformed into the description I gave earlier, and he adopted the role of a punishing, scary figure, where Sinterklaas took the role of a wise and noble man. Zwarte Piet can be seen on older photographs with chains, the bundle of twigs and the iconic burlap bag, all very reminiscent of Krampus. During the 20th century, the scary Zwarte Piet eventually changed into a clownish caricature. Also during this time, more and more people came out against the depiction of Zwarte Piet. Some early examples date back to the 1920s. This surprised me a lot since I was under the impression that this was a relatively recent controversy. Today, the debate is incredibly polarized and toxic. One side is pointing to the medieval origins and claims that this has nothing to do with slavery and colonialism, while the other side tries to explain that you can't just dismiss the colonial history around the character. I've spent some time reading up on both sides of the discussion, and it is very clear to me that the dismissal of colonialism and racism is very harmful. Even though it is true that the origins of Sinterklaas tradition date back centuries, it cannot be denied that the Dutch colonial history played an immense role in how Zwarte Piet is depicted nowadays. Some people have started changing the appearance of Zwarte Piet, calling him Soot Piet. They claim that he became black because of all the years climbing through the chimneys delivering presents. Others have started creating all different colors of Piet, uh, red, blue, green, etc. Even though I can see this as an attempt to improve the tradition, I feel like people are still avoiding the confrontation with the racist aspects of this tradition. Finally, I would like to say something about education. When I was in school, I learned that the colonial times were called the Golden Age of the Netherlands. I was taught that this was something to be proud of, and the horrors of slavery were just some footnotes in my history book. Maybe this was different for others, but I was shocked about how lacking my knowledge of this part of history was. I will link the sources I used for this video in the description below. This project felt like it took ages, um, not just the sculpting and the painting, but also the process of doing all the research. I really don't want to come across as if I know everything there is to know about this topic. I just felt like I had to share my journey and um, show that everybody has blind spots and this was just me being confronted with my own. I also realized that this video is uh, very different than the stuff that I usually do here on YouTube, uh, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. I will be making more videos like this in the future if I get inspired again, uh, so be prepared for that. I'm a bit anxious uh, for the reactions that I might be getting on this video because the topic is so polarizing, um, but we'll deal with that later, I guess. Also, before people start furiously typing in the comments, Go woke, go broke. I have some news for you. I'm already broke. Wait, maybe that's not the comeback I... As a final note, I really want to thank Taryn from Conjured Crafts and all the amazing other people joining in on this Yule Ghouls collaboration. I really enjoyed it and I really hope I'm not the killjoy of the group. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed it and here is some footage of the final result. Thank you for watching.
I am already broke. I'm 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 already broke. <sighs>